Ever since the invention of the bicycle in the early 1800s, there have been thousands of different saddle designs. An idea which started out as nothing more than a plank of wood eventually evolved into shapes like this, which sit at the forefront of saddle design. But why do we have this overall shape and how are brands like Celitalia using the latest technology to keep refining their top tier performance saddles? Well, I'm here at their HQ in Italy to follow the 25 years of evolution of the iconic SLR saddle. And I'm gonna be using the ID Match pressure mapping system to see how the changes in design impact saddle pressure and therefore comfort too. And this thing has got over 68 individual sensors in it. Before I dive into specifics here, let me explain why broadly speaking, most saddles are a triangular or T-shape. In the simplest terms, it's to match the shape of our bodies and skeletal structure to provide a stable platform. The rear section is to offer support for our sit bones, and the front of the saddle narrows to allow free movement of your legs when you're pedaling, but still offer some support while lent forwards, which rotates our pelvis, which is an area which is narrower than our sit bones. And while there have been tweaks and changes to the design, it's a concept that was broadly adopted by the whole bike industry. And while in this video I'm focusing on the evolution of the SLR, Celitalia have been in the game of making saddles since 1897, but their first performance saddle was this, the Turbo. I mean, what a wicked name for a saddle. Made famous by icons like Bernardino racing on it. And then if we move forward through the years, in 1990, there was the launch of the Flight. And then following on from that, there was a whole host of different saddles, including this, the SLR in 1999, famous for its minimalist design. You had options of metal or carbon fiber rails, padding, minimalist padding, or simply no padding at all. And in its lightest guise, this saddle weighed about 80 grams, which at the time was almost unheard of. When the SLR first launched, there was no central cutout and just one whip option to choose from, but its minimalist design was a big hit with racers. It measured 275 millimeters long and 130 millimeters wide. And its design was really based on tradition and personal rider feedback. But with riders like Contador, Cancellara and Valverde using the saddle, it remained popular for best part of 10 years. And along the way, there were numerous different special editions. And to see how all these saddles compare, I'm going to be using the ID Match system with the help of Matteo Paganelli, Celitalia's ID Match and brand expert. Our first job, install the Generation 1 saddle from 1999 and then calibrate the system. We are now going to uh, calibrate the pressure mapping on the bike. So the, the best way is to set the pressure mapping, select the shape. And after that, uh, we are going to select with a BRP the calibration. In this way, when you sit on the saddle, you know, we know exactly where in which coordinate you are sitting with the seat bones and uh, we can match the saddle shape to your body. So this is the first uh, generation. What, uh, just to explain you also what uh, the match has done uh, with, uh, with the pressure mapping is find which is uh, uh, the shape uh, for the new one starting from the previous one. So in this way, we match it exactly the characteristic of the the, the, the old one, we can say, and the people that was comfortable on the first and the second and the third and the fourth yeah. are always uh, in the same sitting position. You have a good proportion of uh, the balance left and right is not bad. The problem is that you have 50% of weight on the nose, so up of the BRP. Yeah. So this means that, that you are pushing too much on the nose. This number should not be 50, should be around 10 or 15% maximum. Wow. <laughs> so we have to find a way to reduce it, obviously finding which is the best saddle for you. All right, that's generation one saddle. Interesting to see how I'm sitting right on the front, but it's gonna be good to see how that changes across to generation two, when we can start to see where the Superflow cutout is involved. So generation two next. When the Generation 2 SLR launched in 2010, there were some pretty big changes made. 
There were now two width options with the addition of the 145mm width to account for the difference in people's sit bone widths. There was also this central cutout added to help reduce pressure and increase blood flow and soft tissue areas. But there was also the lateral wing added onto the side to work for two reasons. One, for the aesthetics, but also to work in conjunction with the other ergonomic aspects of the saddle design. Obviously, as you see, you are sitting uh, in the same position. So this <laughs> yeah. means that your, the feeling of your body is exactly the same from the previous one to the new one. Yeah, but can you see how the like flow cutout has changed it slightly? Uh, a bit. A small uh, difference. There is a small difference because if you see here, there is more pressure on this area, but uh, you are still with 50% uh, up, uh, in the front of the nose with the pressure, so there is no difference. The Generation 2 might have changed things a bit, but not by much, which surprised me as I'd expected the flow cutout to make more of a difference. So, what about the third generation from 2018? Now, some of the big change here was mostly about the reduction of overall length. 27 millimeters shorter this version was, and it was referred to as the boost version, which is slightly confusing considering we've made the saddle slightly shorter. The reason behind this was really from a lot of the learnings that SLR found from their ID Match bike fitting system. You see, by removing that extra area from the front, it simply means people can't ride on the piece that isn't intended for riding on and makes them more inclined to move to the rear of the saddle for the section that you're actually supposed to ride on. And in talking about the rear of the saddle, there was also this change here where the unnecessary padding was removed. And this is as a way to try and refine the overall shape and also to help reduce weight. In addition to this, the saddle rails were made 10 millimeters longer to help increase the range of flexibility from a bike fitting perspective. But perhaps the biggest change overall came when the 3D printed cover was launched, which gave Celitalia the ability to really accurately control the areas that provided support or more comfort across the saddle cover rather than relying solely on different densities of foam. Okay, so we are now in the generation three. If we look at the screen, we see that the position is not the best, probably based on the habit that you have on the, on the saddle that we are going to check later with the fourth generation, but uh, is improved by the superflow. So the yeah. superflow is helping you to reduce uh, the pressure. And uh, one important and interesting information is the pelvis rotation that uh, with the first and second generation without a cutout, uh, doesn't allow you to sit uh, properly and your pelvis was rotating left. Yeah. Now you are more balanced than rotating aligned yeah. or right. So you are going now in the opposite position with the pelvis. Okay. But you have more stability and you have less pressure in the center. Which leads me nicely to the Generation 4 saddle. Now, all of the changes and tweaks which have been made here are from Celitalia's learnings from all over the years but also thanks to the thousands of different data points captured from their ID Match system, of which there have been over 100,000 bike fits conducted all around the world. And then when you combine that in conjunction with their latest saddle mapping technology, that is why they've made these specific changes. Now, overall, the saddle is six millimeters shorter than the Generation 3 saddle, and the 3D printed top cover has also been refined not only with its internal structure, but also externally to give a different surface on the top. Now, if we flip the saddle over, underneath there's also lots of changes too, such as the point at which the saddle rail mounts the base has been stretched out further. What this does is actually open the angle up of the saddle rail here to enable it to have more flex and compliance, a design which is said to help to improve comfort. But what does all this actually mean and equate to when we get it onto the ID Match jig. If we see here, the pressure is more distributed in the saddle with the, with the seat bones in the right way. Probably we will see in the end that the, the center of the, the bar center of your weight is uh, up on the line of the BRP. But the good thing is that this is super stable, so you have better stability on yeah. your on your pelvis. And here we are less than 30%. So we reduce it more. So uh, even more. Yeah, even more okay. the pressure in, on the nose. And uh, we are seeing now, finally, 
your right uh, seat bones. Yeah. So until uh, the fourth generation normal padding, you, we were seeing too much pressure on your left seat bones. Now we are seeing more also the right seat bones. That is a good thing. In the latest generation saddle, I wanted to try the normal foam covered version as well as the more expensive and advanced 3D printed version to see if there really was a noticeable difference. All that's changed between these last two saddles, the shape is the same, everything's the same apart from this top cover, right? Exactly. So the difference between the normal cover and the 3D cover is that we have done a structure on the saddle that allow you to sit properly on the saddle and you need you have support where you need it and you, do, you have a soft part where you don't need pressure on, on the nose. So I guess the like 3D printing, it gives you more control over where you can More control place. and more support where you need and less support when you don't need. Okay, that makes sense. Because uh, traditionally, all the normal saddle are made manually uh, with the same tension from the back to the front. So this means that when you tight here the cover, you have the same tension for the pressure up to the nose or to the back. But in the 3D, you have a different uh, characteristic that is uh, here is more stiff because you need more support for your seat bones, but here is more soft because you need less pressure for your pelvic area. That's crazy. Okay. And the interesting thing is that we are seeing a very, a big difference also on the screen because you are balancing more and better the pelvis position on the saddle. So they're small differences, but they're enough that it should help improve yes, comfort. Exactly. So yeah. the 3D is a big difference, but yeah, yes, yeah. obviously yes. Matteo showed me that in my normal riding position, my pelvis isn't straight. But now with the final evolution of saddle, it's corrected that. And I'm not gonna lie, it did feel kind of weird. In the, last, uh, in the last analysis, you were sitting exactly here with the two seat points in the right way and uh, without having pressure in the arch. So in this way, you can freely rotate your pelvis without having pressure and extend your leg, obviously. And uh, also your back is more relaxed in your lumbar and cervical area. And uh, this situation obviously gives you more stability because the pelvis has two contact points on the saddle. If, uh, as the first generation, you slide forward or maybe you're habited, you don't have uh, two points, you have only one. So obviously your pelvis can tilt, rotate, or maybe just touch one side as you're doing. So you're doing more on, the, on one side. So the difference is that we were able to see between all of these different generations of saddle was more significant than I had anticipated, which came as a surprise to me really, because the difference between the designs is all relatively subtle, but it was enough for me to notice and have a positive improvement. But it is hard to fully appreciate the difference between the designs when you're indoors riding on a static bike. But it was a positive change nonetheless. And everyone is gonna have slightly different results. And this is the thing, because there are no hard and fast rules about bike saddles in terms of what saddle you should be using or the saddle that you're gonna find most comfortable. Now, Cell Italia are using years of learning, years of development, and all of this data that they've gathered from bike fit optimizations to try to maximize their designs as much as possible. But the thing is, there's never gonna be one saddle to rule them all. It's simply a case of looking at all of the different designs out there and thinking about the style of riding you do and your body position to try to find the saddle that matches up with your style the most, and then you have to try it out. But what I will say is I really do recommend using systems like the ID Match and really relying upon a bike fit expert's knowledge and guidance to find the best saddle that's most likely to match up for you. Now, what was really interesting was that it's the first time I've ever had access to use pressure mapping technology, and I found it really interesting. Now, I already knew that I spent a lot of the time riding on the nose of the saddle, but this really, really highlighted it for me. Now, as to what I do with that information, I've not yet decided, but hopefully it will help lead towards a more comfortable riding position on the bike. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video, found it informative and helpful along the way. If you have, please do give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments section down below. Do you have a saddle that you've been using for a number of years now? Or have you tried some of the latest technologies and designs? As always, if you want to help support our channel, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. Right, we're out of here. See you later.